Taylor Curette here alongside Marcus Randall, former LSU quarterback. Th thank you for, so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Now, you first started with LSU in 2000, um, and you came in with Nick Saban. You, you were telling me that. But being born in Baton Rouge, growing up here, was that sort of a dream to, to, to put on that purple and gold uniform and be a Tiger? Yeah. I um, always followed LSU. I was um, more of a Southern fan. Um, okay. Because my brother played quarterback for Southern. Um, you know, a lot of my family members graduated from Southern. So growing up, I was a big Southern fan. But, but I always liked, um, you know, the uh, state school. So when, when I had that opportunity, when Nick Saban came in and offered me the scholarship, you know, I felt very honored. Talk about the atmosphere being a player under Coach Saban and just that team at that time. Was there something special about that team? Could you sense it? Yeah, uh, you can do um, sense it. We always talked about being a band of brothers. So, I mean, um, we always were uh, close-knitted, um, did a lot of things together, hung out together. So, I mean, you know, that was a um, special, special moment. And, and we always knew it, it, was, it was something special going on. And, um, and in 2003, we actually made the um, national championship against Oklahoma and won that game. So, you know, that kind of solidified, you know, who we were. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, a lot of those players on the team, you think about Michael Clayton, uh, Marcus Spears, yourself, you guys have stayed, you know, for three or four years. You, nowadays in college football, you, you kind of seen the opposite. People are leaving, you know, sophomore year, they're declaring for the draft. W what do you think that, that trend, is that a bad thing for college football? And, and if so, how, how can coaches get players to stay a little bit longer? Well, um, I can't say if it's a good or bad thing, as um, long as those guys are, um, you know, still doing their schoolwork and on track to graduate at, at, at some point. Because, I mean, you're right. going to um, still need something to fall back on after football. But um, it is a big trend that's going on now. Guys leaving early, um, they only stand three years, whether they're a red shirt, sophomore, or, 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 or a true junior. And, and, they're not, and they're not really focusing on if there's going to be first round, second round. I mean, after those three years, you know, a lot of those guys are, you know, have their mind made up for either personal reasons or other reasons that they're, uh, you know, we're going to take their talents on to the professional uh, level. Let's talk a little bit about this 2014 team, LSU. Uh, have you watched them this season? What, what, what's impressed you? What sort of have you questioned? They're a young team, but I mean, what's your impression of them so far? Um, they're a young team, and um, you know, I think they've been getting better every game. So I mean, that's going to also help them as they keep playing those games and those guys getting more and more snaps, more and more games underneath their belt, you know, I think they're going to become, you know, a, a better team. If we can get them all to uh, stay, you know, a few more years around, you know, it's hard to keep building those teams every year. And um, you got your Mississippi States, you know, that got, you know, a lot of older guys, maybe not be a, a, as talented as the guys we have, but that maturity, you know, helps them out a whole lot and being able to play in a lot of those SEC games. That's why I think that, that that's the part that we're missing right now, but I think that we will get it and we will. I'm hoping that we can finish this year up strong. Yeah. Um, this, this game this weekend, they're playing Kentucky in Tiger Stadium. Now, whenever LSU is playing Kentucky, how many people <laughs> talk to you about the play that occurred in 2002, the Bluegrass Miracle? How often does that come up? Um, that was about, what, about 12 years now? And, yeah. And I know I've been told the story and been heard the stories about, well, you know, um, what those people were, were doing at that exact moment, where they were watching the game. So I've heard it. I want to say a million times. I don't want to be exaggerated, but <laughs> I'd be close. Yeah. What? Uh, what? Um. I mean, is it is it special that that the people remember that that so much, and then they're always wanting to talk about it? I mean, you were involved in maybe one of the craziest, most memorable plays in LSU sports history. I mean. Yes. I mean. Um. I mean. Hail Mary, I mean, that's something that, you know, a lot of people growing up, you know, think about when you're throwing a ball up in the backyard or something, you know, you, you always do that countdown, five, four, three, two, one, you right. throw it up. So that was just so happened to, um, you know, come into play, you know, the, the um, opportunity to present itself. But that was something that we did practice every week, though. Yeah. Never worked, but we, we uh, <laughs> did practice those plays every week, and it just so happened to, um, you know, work when we needed it to work. And that play called was Dash Right 93 Berlin, correct? Correct. And uh, let, let's take a look at that play if we can. All right. um, how often did you guys practice this? Um, we actually practiced every Thursday. We, we um, had a lot of situations on Thursday where we practiced, and, um, and Coach would call the play, and we would line up. And, um, that's you rolling out. What are you thinking at this point? I'm looking for Michael Clayton right now because that's how we ran the play. We always ran to Michael Clayton. He was the middle guy. He was always the tip guy. I mean, he um, – he, he was always able to jump the highs, and we also had um, 
Robinson and Devery Henderson, as you see, catches the ball right there's here. There's Devery. <laughs> Michael Clayton will claim that he tipped that ball. Right. Did he, did he tip that? Um, it was close. <laughs> If he didn't tip it, he, he did just enough to, for the guy behind him to tip it, so he did his job. Yeah, he's taking a look at it. Michael Clayton caught a pass right before this one to put you guys in a little bit of position. But, I mean, when you're, when you're down in that situation, were you at all ever thinking that this is a possibility to, um, to complete this pass? Well, actually, every time we actually tried to play or, or, or we ran it back in practice, we were um, actually always a little bit closer than where we are now. We always were around the 50-yard line, 40-yard line, and the ball normally lands somewhere up in the end zone. But, um. As he threw it, um, I thought it was going to be a long shot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was going to be a long shot. You know, I knew that they would be preparing for it or looking for it. It was the last play of the game, so they had the guys all the way back there. So um, even if he had caught it, I was thinking that he was going to be short. But um, with Devin Henderson's speed, as you all seen, oh, that, he, um, that, that he displayed, whether he was with here or with the Saints. I mean, once he got it in his hand, I didn't think too many people were, were going to be able to catch him. Right now, this last clip that we just saw when you were – throwing the ball now. Can you see from the, your angle that he caught the ball, or were you no. just reacting to the crowd? <laughs> Actually, <laughs> after I released it, I seen Michael Clayton jump up, um, and I was looking through, I was looking through, and then I saw our bench run out there, then that's when I finally realized, <laughs> I, I said, yeah, Devin must have caught that ball. Yeah. And, um, wow. So that was a memorable moment right there. Um, absolutely. And um, when you're on that field, and the, the Kentucky fans are running out, I mean, did you? Did any of them run past you and say anything? Like, what were they thinking after they realized? Oh, well, actually, right the before game? the play, actually, right before the play, I, um, on the um, end zone up in the goalpost, they all uh, got fans hanging from the goalpost, yeah. and as the ball was snapped to me, it had fireworks shooting off. Um, <laughs> they, they had already then dumped the coach, and wow. um, our whole sideline was um, yeah. full of students and fans ready to rush the field. Actually, they did rush the field. Um, only to be disappointed after they see an outcome. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, just with your one throw, you've been you're disappointing Kentucky fans for 12 years now. They, I'm sure they still think about that. Um, what sort of pride do you get saying you're from LSU and saying you played at LSU? I mean, do you have any pride in, in that when, when you talk to people? Yes. Um, th th that was a uh, great honor. I can't um, – and graduating from LSU, not only playing here. I mean, Absolutely. Both of those were um, big on my list of um, things to do and, and being able to uh, accomplish those things. You know, that was a big accomplishment. I want to talk about this play one more time. It was named the Bluegrass Miracle, but there's a couple other names that were in the media that I found out that it could have been named, so okay. I want to run through them with you and see if maybe these would have worked better. The Divine Deflection, that's one. This one is, I like this one. It works every time. A little bit of <laughs> play on words right, with Devery right, Henderson. Right. And then the Lexington long shot. Now, out of those three, I mean, you think Bluegrass Miracle just sounds right because we've right. been hearing it for 12 years. But, I mean, you could call the play whatever you, you want to. Really a, a memorable play and something your name will be attached to, you know, forever. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah, um, those other names, I don't know. I don't think those names fit, but like no. you say, maybe because we've been hearing it for the, um, for the last 12 years. But, right. you know, I think that Bluegrass Miracle, that's something you I don't think forget. That's yeah, I think that's something that the Jets something you don't forget. forget. Right. Um, can we get one score prediction for tonight, this weekend's game from um, Kentucky LSU? Um, I think it'll, it'll be close in the beginning. And then I think around that third quarter, fourth quarter, I think we should be able to uh, wear them down and pull away with it. So I'm going to give a prediction of 24. 24-14. 24-13. All right. Well, Marcus, thank you so much for being here. Um, we can't expect anything to happen in that game that happened back in 2002, but <laughs> we appreciate you being here, and uh, we're going to send it back out to you guys.